Dr. Zayas is, <laughs> what we have here is failure. <laughs> to Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the Forbidden Zone and beyond with several amazingly talented guests from the Planet of the Apes franchise. So without further ado, let's bring out our guests in order of film appearance. First, here to discuss her role as the savage human Nova in Planet of the Apes and beneath the Planet of the Apes, please welcome back Linda Harrison. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. So glad to have you back. How are you doing? Very well. I feel very lucky. Oh, we're the ones lucky to have you back here at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. And as always, it's a pleasure to see you. And um, I was just discussing my friend to a friend of mine the other day how you once played Wonder Woman in the uh, in the Wonder Woman pilot. To the it. pilot, right? I did. Yeah, I did. it's like that made that, that you are you are still the uh, the first live action Wonder Woman in my heart. Oh well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome, and thank you again for joining us here today. It's a pleasure. Thank you. And next, here to discuss his role as the rebellious Lucius in Planet of the Apes and the Busboy Ape in Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, please welcome back Lou Wagner. How are you doing? Good, Lou. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you. Oh, so glad to have you back. Uh, you know, it's I, I, I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this last time, um, but every time there's an election year, uh, I always see somebody reshare the uh, 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 Jack Webb's speech in The Great Departure, and I always see you in that scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's very interesting that uh, uh, a, a president uh, was sick in the hospital, um, Eisenhower, and he requested that uh, that segment to be shown in his hospital room. Really? He was Jack Webb, so yeah. <laughs> oh, very nice, right? And you did a, you did a couple of uh, a drag nets. So uh, Jack Webb must have liked you because he was notorious for. Uh, yeah, once it once took a shine to you, he'd bring bring you back. Yeah, yeah, I did six. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Of course, and, and of course, you went on and did uh, seventy one episodes of Chips and dabbled in uh, Star Trek and as well. So uh, you've had a great career, Lou, and I'm so glad to have you back here talking about Planet of the Apes again. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And next, here to discuss the role of the horsey chimp in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, please welcome back Pat Carty. The, the horsey chimp? The, the horsey chimp. Sorry, not chimp, chimp. <clears throat> no, uh, <clears throat> actually, I, my credit is young chimp. Young chimp, yes, that's right. Among young fandom chimp. for the horsey chimp, but it's the more familiarized version. But no, uh, That was my last acting credit, in fact. Oh, indeed, but... <clears throat> You had an acting credit. I didn't get a chance to talk to you about this last time, but I am a remain a huge fan of William Castle, and you got to work with him on Let's Kill Uncle. Let's Kill Uncle. I was a big fan of his, too. As a matter of fact, I was just over the moon when I got the part. And working with Mary Batum on that and, and Nigel yeah. Green. Nigel amazing, Green, great actor. Uh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And a, a, a great film. And again... I just I, I I love I love Uncle William. I loved his right. his, his wonderful energy and um, yeah, just a big. Fan I was again. also I was also Breer, and it's about time for the fans that remember that show. Uh, I played Imogene Coca and Joey Ross's son in prehistoric cave times. It was a Sherwood Schwartz show that we were doing opposite the stage for Gilligan's Island. Yes, and it started at a time. Then they, they, towards the end, they knocked you in the 20th century. Right, they did. It became the the Beverly Cave Billies. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely did. Well, Pat, well, again, welcome back. Absolutely glad to have you here. Thank you. Indeed. And next, here to discuss the role of Prince Cornelius in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, please welcome back Bobby Porter. Hi, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Bobby, how you been? I've been way above average. <laughs> hey, uh, above average in these interesting past uh, two years we've had is is the new awesome. Yes, it is. <laughs> As it is. Everything is good in your corner of the world? Everything is excellent in my corner of the world. How about you guys? Everybody good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody is good. And Bobby, I, I just you you have been in so many stuff both in front of the camera, behind the camera. I could talk to you all day about Cork. I could talk to you about your stunt work. I we gotta we gotta do a one on one sometime. Let's make that happen. I'd be honored. Awesome. Right turn, Clyde, forever. 
<laughs> <laughs> and finally, he is an actor with an amazing body of work among fan favorite properties, including Star Trek, Star Wars, and Doctor Who. Today, he joins us to discuss the role of General Thade's uh, unnamed niece in the 2001 version of Planet of the Apes. Please welcome Deep Roy. Hi, how are you? Good, Deep, how are you? I'm doing great. Oh, so glad to have you here. I haven't had the pleasure of hosting you yet. It is such a privilege. Again, a big fan of your body of work. You've you've collaborated with everybody from Peter Sellers to Peter Wingard and so many actors and directors and creative projects. And I, I just I just thank you for your career. Uh, it's it's been a, it's been a privilege for for quite a long time for me. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's absolutely our pleasure. It's our pleasure to have all of you here. Thank you for joining us at the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Our team is going to the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for you. In the meantime, I'd just love to throw this out for each of you in your own uh, individual ape-related uh, ape projects. What would you consider maybe the craziest uh, day that you each had on your respective sets? Ladies first. Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking right now. The craziest? Yeah. Hmm. Well, a lot of it was crazy, you know, running and jumping, you know, and uh, so the picture had some some uh, danger, possibly. But, you know, when that camera rolls, you forget about anything and do your thing. Absolutely. No, that that was I, I wouldn't blame you for it being a blur. Uh, let me ask this much was uh, uh what was what was it harder running around on the on the beaches and on the outside so exterior sets or the interior sets and beneath? What do you mean running around? Well, you were run, running around on the first movie. It was mostly oh, the yeah. internal shots, yeah. and then beneath the Planet of the Apes was mostly the studio shots. So, mm -hmm. what was what was the most challenging? Um, well, the beach scenes were wonderful, and the interiors were fine. Uh, just yeah, they were just fine the camera rolling there you go there you go then th that's all we need all right who's next who's got another one lou you got something uh the uh most embarrassing day i had was uh uh we were at the ranch and we were shooting uh we're about to shoot the corn scene mm -hmm. and um and I was done with my makeup and they take me to my dressing room. And in my dressing room is Roddy. It was his uh, makeup, his trailer also. And we were shocked because it's so important when you're not working to be able to relax by yourself. Sure. You know, you have all this makeup and everything on. And Roddy was really upset. Because, not because I was there, but because the studio didn't give him his own trailer, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, he uh, he called for the uh, the appropriate people to to get us both our trailers, and uh, and I apologized, and he said, "Man, you know, it's not your fault, you know." But it was very embarrassing to me. <laughs> Excuse me, what are you doing in here? <laughs> yeah, right. That's pretty much it. Pat, what do you got? Pat, do you have a. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear my name. Um, yeah, the most uh, interesting day was uh, well, I met, the, I met a young director, first time director on the set, who is also playing one of the characters in Battle for the Planet of the Apes. And um, he invited me to the, the premiere of his film that was happening just shortly after we were done with production of Planet. And I saw the film. It was called Schlock. And that's pretty much what the film was. I thought it was very funny, but it was very quirky. I didn't think it'd go over. I wasn't sure this director would go anywhere, actually. But um, it turns out he's John Landis. And he did extremely well, actually. So I was wrong about that. But it was, it was a great experience. Also, I had um, worked with Austin Stoker previously uh, on a film called Horror High, in mm -hmm. which I played a Dr. Jekyll. I was a doctor, teenage Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. And he didn't know I was going to be on the set of Battle. So 
I started quoting him lines from Horror High from behind him, my ape makeup, and he had no idea who I was. He finally realized after a while that this guy, this must be Pat Cardi. He... <laughs> oh, there you go. Deep, it's up to you. Tell us a story. Yes, uh, what happened on Planet of the Apes was uh, I was doing X-Files as well. So they F up the shooting schedule because uh, during day I would work on Planet of the Apes. At nighttime, I'd go and do X-Files. So I didn't sleep for four days. Mm. You know, and Richard Zanuck asked me, you know, how are we going to, you know, resolve this? I said, I'll work X-Files nighttime and uh, during daytime, I'll do the Planet of the Apes. So I didn't sleep for four days. Mm -hmm. And Tim, Tim Burton asked me double dipping again, and uh, that was my first movie with Tim Burton. But then again, uh, you know, when they have up shooting schedule, uh, I worked, I said, said to Richard Zanuck, I'll do it. And they provided me with a car, but I didn't sleep for four days. Well, either one of them so, could have offered you more money and you would have just blown off the other job. Well, the thing is, I got paid. <laughs> Both guys, but then again, you know, I, I, I did uh, two apes in Planet of the Apes, Theodore's niece and one gorilla kid. And yeah. plus, I was a human being in there as well. Mm. Triple dipping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Indeed. Triple money. Yeah. Four yeah. times. Yeah. And then and, and that's, that's what we do. We say yes to the gig and then we figure out how to work the schedule. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> work is work. All right, Bobby, what's yours? Uh, the last day. Last day I shot battle, I was working out at Fox Ranch, which was Malibu Creek State Park, north of LA. And I was doing a stage play at my college at UC Irvine, which is about normally about a two and a half hour drive away. And I realized I was not going to make the play in time unless I just got my car and drove with the makeup on. So I drove all the way through town as Cornelius and walked into the theater about two minutes before the or two minutes after this, the, the play started, and uh, the other actors that had to walk on stage with me didn't even see me come in. I said, guys, we're, we're good, I'm here. And five of us walked on stage, and I started delivering Shakespeare as Cornelius, and the audience took about 30 minutes to figure out that it was an ape doing Shakespeare. And um, <laughs> after that, I'd already been in the makeup for nearly 20 hours, so I knew it was my last chance, more than likely, to, to really have some fun. So <laughs> after the play, I went around to all the different dormitories and started knocking on windows and waking a few people up and <laughs> it was um it was entertaining times <laughs> how could it not be uh is there any picture of you on stage with the makeup on oh hell no <laughs> no 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 certain things are just not meant to be recorded right fair okay yeah i would have loved to be the audience you know at least one guy was in there the actors were those filthy long hair hippie kids well, they actually shot the fourth Planet of the Apes on my campus. Um, Conquest was, not Conquest, but um, yeah, Conquest is the fourth one. Yeah. Yeah. I was in my organic chemistry lab and I looked out the window and I saw a bunch of apes running around. I told my lab partner, hey, I'm out of here. I'm going to go pay a visit. And that's literally how I got the job as I had lunch with J. Lee Thompson, one mm -hmm. great director. And uh, the crew was the same crew I had just worked with the summer before on a different film, totally unrelated. So you never know. There you go. And uh, we say Busboy Ape, uh, your character is the one that sets the initial fire, right? Uh, who are you talking to? In, in, in Conquest, uh, your character sets the initial fire, right? Oh, no, I wasn't in Conquest. I was oh, just, no, 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 no. That, sorry, that was that. Sorry. Yeah, no, I was actually on campus as a pre med student. I, who knew that I'd end up 50 years doing this instead of saving lives <laughs> yeah absolutely there you go well let, thank you all everybody for indulging in my capricious curiosity let's we're going to go to our audience questions let's just go in and jump into those and our first one comes from michael s the film series has many iconic quotes what which quote is everybody's personal favorite to go ladies first um I think Heston's uh, line, you, you dirty apes. Uh, damn, damn dirty you apes. Know, you damn dirty apes. Yeah. 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 I'll second that. Yeah, that's the one that sticks. Anybody else? Yeah, I got one. 
Yeah, hello? Go ahead. Uh, I like my line. Uh, you would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to uh, Dr. Zayas, and I said, uh, see if I can remember it after 50 years. Uh, <laughs> this is inexcusable. Why must knowledge stand still? What about the future? You know? And he said, I just might have saved it. Saved for it. I just might have saved it. Yes. Good line. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That is a good one. Ape shall not kill ape. Yeah. Yeah. Good one. Mm -hmm. Favorite episode. Deep, you got a favorite line from yours or any of the other films? Well, me, uh, obviously, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory playing the 165 Oompa Loompas. You know, <laughs> and um, uh, work my air off, you know, five days a week, uh, almost like 18 hours a day. Uh, play at 165 individual Oompa Loompas. Uh, each song took uh, a month to rehearse and a month to shoot. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not a singer or a dancer. I made it happen because uh, Tim asked me if I could uh, sing or dance. I said, I only sing and dance at the parties. <laughs> and especially when I feel drinks, that's when I start dancing. And uh, he said, have you got coordination? I said, well, wait and see what happens. But it happened, you know, and that was the hardest physically and mentally that the movie have done. Fair. Absolutely fair. Man, Michael, great question to start us off with. Thank you. And what do we have next? Here is one from Gamer51. Um, I'll ask, has anybody uh, uh, found themselves in possession of any of the props or costumes, either from the Ape set or maybe any other feature uh, or television work that they've done? I I didn't get any of the props. Um, but a lot of people... I, I have uh, uh, one of my appliances, and uh, uh, a friend uh, brought me uh, some broken pieces of... Um, Ape City, you know, from uh, from uh, oh, wow. the ranch. Mm -hmm. All right, nice. Uh, there are still pieces. If you go out to Melba Creek State Park now, everybody's going to run out there tomorrow and start looking for the sets. Um, you can find some of the basic units from the city still on the ground there. It's sort of a modern day archaeological uh, endeavor, but um, like look over arrowheads, huh? Yeah, well, I took my good friend, Dean Preston, who is basically a film historian from New Zealand. Hi, Dean. Oh, um, yeah. And we went and uh, we went to go see the opening of our documentary. And on the way, he uh, spent some time at the ranch. And one of the highlights of his trip out here from New Zealand was finding a piece of Ape City. And there are still pieces out there 50 some years later. So I guess that's a little look. All right, there you go. From Planet of the Apes, the Battle for the Planet of the Apes, I took my makeup home. There were several times that instead of going back to makeup when we were released, I just went in my car. So, which is quite an enjoyable thing. If you find, if you're driving as an ape and there are children in the cars next to you, they're just wide eyed and amazed. You know, look, that ape is driving the car. Been there, um, done that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> And then I have some props from It's About Time when I was the cave boy. I have a, a club from that and a piece of my costume. Um, and and I over the years, I had some other things, um, but uh, I've moved so many times, it's it's all gone now. However, Deep. I do have the appliances still. Deep, you and I yes. should have stolen the sets from Africa. Remember our trip to Africa? <laughs> yeah, yes. you do. Yeah, you do. Deep and I actually played the same character. Deep played the close-ups because he was the better-looking guy, and I did the wide shots for the same character in a movie in Africa. Yeah, what, was the movie uh, right? yes. what movie was it? It was called Going Bananas at the time. It was um, Dom DeLuise, Jimmy J.J. Yes. Walker, Herbert yep. Lom, the infamous Deep Roy, and yours truly. There was a scene in the movie where I actually had to beat myself up to rescue myself. 
We'll talk about this another day. There's just too much, too many moving parts in that. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I do, I do, rem- I do remember the film. So, so deep. Uh, have you kept uh, been able to keep anything from uh, the sets uh, from any of the films you worked on? Well, they gave me the suit on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because uh, Tim said to me, "This is looks good on you." So. Why did you take the whole thing, shoes, everything, uh, keep a suit and everything? And um, uh, they didn't give it to me. And Richard Janet asked me, did you get your suit? I said, no, I didn't. He said, let me fix this thing. He picks up the phone and the suit was there within 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the power of Richard Janet. So there you go. <laughs> There you go, indeed. And Gamer, thank you. Great question. What do we have next? And here's one from Joshua, who wants to know, what was the most challenging part of filming action scenes? For anybody who had them. For me, for me, being in the action scenes was uh, a lot of standing around and waiting. Because there was always... There was always a lot of rehearsal and a choreography in front of the camera. And if you weren't right in front of the camera for those scenes, then you had to st- stand back and and wait. And I know that there were hours that we just stood in the background waiting for action. I've been wanting, somebody in this room will know where the line came from. It was defined as eons of boredom punctuated by brief moments of sheer terror. <laughs> that's filmmaking but it came from a movie anybody know what movie it came from don't look at me i don't have the answer i don't know it was, I think it was a cop movie <laughs> eons of boredom punctuated by brief moments of sheer terror that's movie making <laughs> if so anybody true. in our chat room knows that uh, let us know yeah please help me out so um they, they for for the first planet we did that in uh the summer So all our action scenes, of course, I'm in makeup, and uh, a lot of those were outside in uh, 105 degree heat, and it was uh, marked higher by all the Klieg lights that we had to shine on us. So we were in 120, 125 degrees, and uh, a, a lot of the camera people fainted that it was so hot, you know? So that was, that was my, uh, you know, warfare. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Linda, what, uh, what was the most challenging part of, uh, of filming in general for you? Hmm. Um, there wasn't, I mean, I guess the whole movie, you know, there was a challenge. Um, yeah what I understood was the director was he, he didn't tell the people what scene was going to be next. I don't know why he did that, but I, I guess to keep us a surprise, um, but um, challenging, not really. Heston was great. The director was great. Right. Linda, did you have to ride a horse? Yes. And had you ridden horses before? Yeah, but they're so trained, mm. you know, it's so easy to ride them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there you go. And uh, Deep, from uh, any features you've done, what's been the most challenging uh, scene you've ever shot? Well, it's Planet of the Apes. You know, I played two apes, uh, Theodore's yeah. niece and one gorilla like kid. And um, uh, to be in a makeup for four and a half hours and two people making you up and playing two different characters, um, that's what's challenging, you know. And uh, Theodore's niece was uh, like a female ape and one gorilla kid was a male ape, you know, kid. Yeah. So uh, that was Tim who asked me that, uh, uh, that I that I should do the one gorilla kid as well. And he said to me, that was his favorite character of the whole of Planet of the Apes. I believe it. <laughs> I absolutely believe it. There you go. Joshua, great question. Thank you for that. What do we have next? Here's one from Lou. If you could do a crossover 
Planet of the Apes, with any other type of show or film, what do you think you would choose? Bobby, of course, already did a Planet of the Apes and Shakespeare crossover. <laughs> Sound of Music. Oh. Or Music of the Apes. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm still waiting for one of those spaceships that go up into space and take all the billionaires up there and then they bring them back down and, you know, Captain Kirk got to go. I think they should all land and they all should be dressed as apes. That's, while, that's they're how up there, while they're up there in space, they should actually don the makeup and then come back down and land and they walk out of the spacecraft wherever they are, you know, virgin. Uh, that was the end of the, the, of the uh, actual book, the original it, book. Ba see, planet planet of the apes i'm just yeah. i'm just telling these guys that's what they need to do sure stick to yeah. the book <laughs> well, I, I would say in this day and age uh west side story when you're an ape you're an ape all the way yeah. Yeah. <laughs> from your first peanut to your last yeah i like it here in the forbidden zone <laughs> <laughs> when you're a jet you're a jet all the way <laughs> apes the musical I love it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, Linda, if you could combine Planet of the Apes and have a crossover with another show or film or something, uh, what would you possibly do? Um, yeah. With other show, what would that be? Um, gee, I, I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, if you think of one, we can revisit it. You mean it, it could be any uh, movie, any film? Yep. Um, crossover. Yep. And it, it, oh, hmm, this is challenging. Hmm. Hmm. Like if we're doing a music, if we're doing a musical motif like before, then I'll, I'll say The King and I. Oh, oh, oh. I see. Someone I said did the TV series. series. You did. Mm -hmm. what, what were you saying, Linda? I, I think someone said Sound of Music. Yes. Yeah. yeah that'd be your mm -hmm. choice, too. Yeah, that'll work. Mm -hmm. Song mm -hmm. of the of Song of the Apes. Uh, you yeah. see all the kids running across the hillside, and they're all little apes. Yeah. Deep, you got a job. So long, <laughs> farewell. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Ooh. you. They need kids. Thank the you. three of us are back in business, pal. We're back <laughs> in. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Deep, if you could combine the Planet of the Apes with another uh, film or television series, what would you pick? Uh, if I can combine Planet of the Apes with another movie, I'll mm -hmm. say Cool Hand Luke. Paul oh, Luke. nice. Yeah. I can uh, eat 50 bananas. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That could be a problem. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you know. You know. <laughs> Dr. Zayas is, what we have here is failure. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> failure to communicate. <laughs> uh, well, there you go well, Lewis thank you that was a funny one uh, <laughs> what do we have next and here's one for Roslyn who wants to know hmm how long did it take everybody to get into their respective costumes on Planet of the Apes the I hard part assume... was the makeup yeah. the make because make we'd get there at 4.30 in the morning or even earlier and and then we'd have a break for breakfast around eight and we it never got finished i mean it was 10 o'clock before we got the first shot in uh on a lot of days so that was uh that was the hardest thing by the time i was around we had the the, the guys had down to a science and we could get made up from the time we walked in the door until the time we were actually in front of a camera was about three and a half hours uh for those of us who had specific makeups it was faster for the the background actors obviously yeah. um one of the things that i'll point out is that when we had the crew um party the rap party a lot of the crew wouldn't show up until hours after we were already in makeup and sometimes we would do makeup at the studio and then get bussed out to fox ranch so the vast majority of the crew the grips electricians makeup guard i mean except for the makeup guys um they only saw us in makeup so when we had the crew party they didn't realize who we were. Oh yeah, you were the little loud guy. That was that. Yeah, that's you, Bobby. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they, they would have to identify us by our mannerisms and not by our faces because they never saw us out of makeup. There so, you go. Uh, three and a half hours was normal. I think Lou it probably took you a little longer in the beginning because you were part of the experiment. You know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it took yeah. about five hours. We when wow when we did the uh the first week, which was location, um our call was two forty five yeah. for seven. Yeah. You know? And yeah. of course it went way past seven because sure. they had no idea what was gonna happen. Sure. You know? Yeah, that do it. But, but we got it down to about about three and a half, four hours, yeah. you know. But that's makeup. The costumes, you know, didn't take that much time yeah. to get into. Sure. The makeup was the baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah. is a good time for the plug. Um, if you are familiar with this documentary, I highly recommend it. That really good looking guy there on the left, that would be our friend Lou Wagner and Tommy Berman, who was instrumental in creating um, the whole Planet of the Apes look. He and Johnny Chambers were the, the dynamic duo. I strongly suggest you guys get a hold of this. It's on Amazon. Uh, Will Conlon is an amazing young director, and um, it tells you all about the history of makeup in film, and it kind of leads right up to the apes. So there's my commercial. There you go. And nice. a fine one. And a fine one it is. Uh, Deep, uh, how long did it take you to get in and out of uh, your uh, your costume and makeup for your Planet of the Apes? Well, well, the makeup took about four and a half hours, two people making you up. 2 a.m. calls, ready for the set by 6.37. And to get into the costume would take about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. And um, stay in the costume, in the makeup all day. And when lunch comes, you know, and uh, uh, Rick Baker said to me, the best way to eat is uh, look in the mirror and yep. eat. Yep. Yep. Uh, Put your finger uh, on the water bottom. Water was on a liquid diet. Yep. Just yeah. you know, a lot of smoothies diet because you don't want to spoil the makeup. Yeah. yeah. Because the people work so yeah. hard to make yeah. you know to make you up, and you don't want to ruin the makeup. Best makeup uh, artist in Hollywood, by far. The the best gathering yep. of makeup artists ever assembled. No so, doubt. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, Linda, well, um, your costume uh, didn't have a lot going on, but uh, we, we, <laughs> we all appreciate it, nevertheless. Um, yeah, I was lucky. Um, we all were lucky, Linda. Uh, um, about a half an hour, because they had to put all this makeup on my body to look dark, you know. And um, so probably a half an hour. Yeah, okay. rub it in. <laughs> I, I really felt, you know, you were talking about Richard Zanuck, uh, who, by the way, was um, my husband, um, picked actors who were very good so they could communicate through the makeup. And Kim Hunter, Maurice Evans, Roddy McDowell, they were all terrific actors and it came through. Yeah, yeah it was. Amazing what this picture is done. And let's go ahead and roll another one. And this comes from Linda. What was your impression of the of the story when you first read the scripts for your features? So what was your first impressions? Linda and Lou, first, go for it. Yeah, my first impression was uh, that it was uh, absolutely fabulous. It was, uh, it dealt on so many different levels, you know, it, it was uh, an allegory for our time and still is, yeah. you know, uh, it dealt with war, it dealt with man's inhumanity to man in apes and stuff, you know, and religion. Uh, it, it was uh, the most articulate script I had ever written and I was just thrilled to be a part of it. As were, as were, and Linda, what were your first impressions when you got uh, the or the first version of the script you got? Um, so unusual, you know. They really made the movie as a um, uh, what's the word, an adventure, and they didn't uh, see that all these other things have come from the film. You know, like Lou was saying, you know, um, talking about that. So um, that was not it. Yeah, yeah. Being a part of the film was 
like being part of a great social experiment too, because I noticed that within hours of everybody having their makeup on, uh, all the apes sort of congregated around their own kind. Yep. So you, you saw all mm -hmm. the chimpanzees together. You saw the orang orangutans together. And the I didn't gorillas. Hang with no, I didn't want to talk to gorillas. No. <laughs> exactly. No. And, and then over time, you would see little things happening where the gorillas were bullying yeah. the chimpanzees mm -hmm. and, and the orangutans were coming between them to fix the situation. <laughs> so uh, I always thought, you know, I'd like to read a little bit more about that experiment. My very yeah. first line I ever got paid for. First line I ever said on film was, if my father were a gorilla, we'd all be learning writing instead of writing. Now try yeah. doing that behind two and a half inches of foam latex makeup. I had <laughs> many... dubbed that line 35 <laughs> times to let them understand it was writing, <laughs> writing. Yeah, that was a tough one. That was my first line. There you go, there you go. That's. Yeah, and then and then uh, and then he pays you back later in the when you climb in the tree. True that. Mm -hmm. He was so great in that role. He was uh, he was back great in everything. So deep. What was uh, your first impression when you got uh, the script for uh, Planet of the Apes? Well, my first impression was, wow, I'm going to be playing two different apes. <laughs> you know, Kiado's niece and one girl like kid, and. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, Planet of the Apes is a great franchise. I mean, they're still doing it. They're still doing it, you know. But then again, my first impression was, yes, you know, Tim Burton movie, Mark Wahlberg, and uh, Paul Giamatti and all everybody in there. And uh, I thought uh, uh, it was a great script when I read it. And I said, how lucky I am to be playing two different apes. Mm -hmm. Abe, be honest, it meant two paychecks. What's my paycheck? It said oh. two paychecks, right? Beg your pardon? Two paychecks? Two paychecks? Uh, two no, different characters, two different checks, deal. right? Uh, made a movie <laughs> deal, you know, the whole movie deal, you know. Actually, I've also played the human, you know, and Tim said to me, look, you can't be beating big, big apes, you know. <laughs> there are horses there, and uh, you can't beat them. You know, it doesn't look good. So, so I stopped doing all. I, I stopped that, you know. So, uh, you and go. he said to me, "You don't have to do this because I've already established you as two apes, and uh, you don't have to, you know, beat the crap out of these big apes." So, <laughs> as a human being. Uh, there you go and Linda great question I think we have time for one more so let's say we got a really fun one and this comes from Sammy who wants to know what would be a dream project for everybody Ooh, good question Sammy mm -hmm. okay a dream <laughs> yeah what's the dream project um well I've already lived my dream that was planet that was well, my dream. Project. Such a great answer, Lou. That is. That was very lucky. Fair, fair. You gonna stand on that one too, Linda? Yes. Absolutely. All right. You know why mess with something that's perfect, Lou? You you, you topped us, man. Good for you. Mm, so, Pat, you got a dream project? I would like to direct, but I've been saying that since I was nine years old. I don't know if it's going to happen. <laughs> I did, you know, it must have been a cliche back then, but I didn't know it. I mean, it just came out of my head. The first film I worked on, The Quick and the Dead, I stood by the director the whole time and I was like, okay, that's the job I want to do. So I wasn't so, you know, into acting. It, the whole course of it was being near the director and, and becoming a director. So I've produced a couple of films, but uh, yeah. I, it, I think that's going to be my final act is I will direct a film. So my dream project... Uh... I've already made my dreams, but my dream project would be to play a villain in Bond movie. Oh, oh well, done, yes, I, I, I'll give a James Bond a good one for his money. I... Okay, Deep, I'll be your stunt double. Beg your pardon? I'll be your You'll stunt, stunt double. double. I'll be your <laughs> stunt double. Again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, you're gonna, yeah of course you can stunt double me. 
<laughs> It'll be half up there. <laughs> oh, I, 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 deep, I'll be first in line <laughs> as to you as, as a Bond villain. Absolutely, I would. So, All right, Bobby, bring us home. Oh, dream project. I don't know. I don't know how I top Lou. Um, I've been in the business 50 years, and I've been very blessed. And the reason why I've been so blessed is because I've got the chance to meet amazing people along the way, both in front of and behind the camera. And there's a bunch of them in the room right now. I need to kind of give them some love. Um, Dean Preston, who is a film historian and a great photographer in New Zealand. Dean, you're amazing. Uh, anybody who knows about Simeon Scrolls, he's a huge, huge historian with respect to the apes. Um, love the man. He's been to my home. Don't ask him where I live because he won't tell you. Uh, David in the UK is more aware of my film career than I am. He sent me this a few months ago. That's Those are all me. God bless you, wow. David. I look to see you nice. soon. And he knows more about film history than I'll ever know. Um, Richard Woloski has a great podcast. Um, Skywalking Through Neverland is the name of the podcast. Talking Apes is specific to the Apes um, family. Um, the fact that I've been around for 50 years has allowed me to meet people like you guys. Uh, I'll always be grateful to you. And my dream is just being a part of this. So thank you very much, all of you. Oh, very cool. Very good. Very good. Sammy, great question. Thank you so much. Panelists, as always, it's been an absolute delight. Any final words before we take our leave? Well, on behalf of all of us, thank you to GalaxyCon for creating a, a venue like this. Patty, you are amazing. And to the boss and to everybody involved with GalaxyCon, uh, you guys have some amazing panels with people who have, would have been forgotten many years later. So for those of us who have kind of come and gone and we're back again, it's thanks to GalaxyCon. Also, you can find most of us on Facebook and on imdb.com. And I'm just grateful for all the, uh, the fans who've uh, stuck with us for a project that started 50 years ago. Yeah. Yep. Yes. I absolutely. want to thank uh, GalaxyCom uh, for having me, uh, my first one. I hope it's not the last one. But then again, hey, thank you for having me. And I wish each and every one all the best. It, it, Linda, you should get those cookies out of your oven. I think the cookies are done. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would love one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm in the kitchen. I smell the pumpkin spice from here. Mm, uh, well, uh, distinguished guests, once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. It's been my absolute honor to serve you all again today. Thank you, our audience, for joining us, and thank you for your great questions. Hope to see everyone again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Happy holidays. And remember, smiles are free. Spend them often. <laughs> <laughs>